There's an obvious paradox in the scope and sequence of teaching shifting. If you teach shifting too early, your students can end up with bad habits and ultimately bad technique. And if you wait too late to teach shifting, it's going to be harder to teach because your students are uncomfortable and unexperienced doing something that may have been better to sequence earlier. So in this video, I'd kind of like to go over uh, the problems with teaching shifting too early as opposed to shifting too late and then ultimately give my recommendation on a guide for how to sequence shifting into your orchestra class. At the time of this recording, under our current UIL rules in the state of Texas, a 3C middle school varsity group has to play two grade twos at a minimum and then a piece that's not on the PML, the prescribed music list. Therefore, a student could go all the way through middle school, all the way through eighth grade, and not even have to shift at all. In a 5A non-varsity high school group and below, the non-varsity group only has to play grade twos and lower and so you could potentially have a student go all the way through high school and then try to play in a collegiate or a community group without ever shifting before in their life. Even when you get into some of the grade three and grade four repertoire, the music doesn't necessarily require the entire orchestra to shift. So if you've got a student that's in the second violin section consistently and you never put them in the first violin section, then they may go all the way through high school without ever learning how to shift. On the other hand, we can't also just have students start shifting just because, you know, we feel like it or because just for the sake of, hey, let's, we, we should probably be shifting right now uh, because, again, they, they don't have the technique and they start shifting and it's just a disaster. This typically means that students have to have a particular skill set before they can start shifting so that they can transfer those skills which a lot of the times are the same skills that we use in first position without having to shift and retaining those in other positions. Are there exceptions to the rule? Of course there are exceptions to the rule. There's an entire school of bass playing that starts the students in in position without and then they learn first position way later on however for most homogenous string orchestra classes and most beginning string classes that's not going to be a possibility um, or a likely possibility that's usually typically done in a private lesson setting or when you have a heterogeneous class where you're just teaching basses or maybe just teaching cellos and basses and you're not having to teach violins and violas and deal with different clefts and everything this channel's geared more towards teaching in a homogenous beginning orchestra setup and classroom orchestras beyond that and so if, if you're in that situation, you're in a homogenous setup and you're able to start your basis off in fourth position, well, hats off to you. You're a better teacher than I am. And this channel's probably not for you. But for the other teachers out there that are looking for some suggestions on how to sequence shifting and some tips for how to set their students up to success, I hope that they find some of the information, some of the content in this video series valuable. If we ask the question, what do students need to have in place before shifting? A lot of that is that they need to have pretty good technique with the left hand, straight wrists, tabletops, all that kind of stuff. And they need to have pretty good technique with the right hand because if they're not generating good tone, it's really not going to help when they're playing in, in higher positions. And so the, the technique doesn't change all that much going from first position to any other position, but my philosophy is going from simple to complicated. And so mastering those techniques first, or at least getting pretty darn good at, at those techniques first before we learn how to shift, I think is, is a smart thing to do. Every student in the class is gonna be at a different level and we use diversification to try to both challenge everybody in the classroom every day and also make people feel confident in the classroom every day regardless of their current skill set. And so it, it's a little challenging to figure out when the class is ready based on 
okay, when their left-hand technique is most of the way there or when they're doing most of the things right, well, what does that mean exactly? That, that's sort of unclear. So I, I like to use a different gauge to sequence and shifting, and it has to do with your visual pitch markers. Most teachers start teaching their homogenous string orchestra classes with some sort of pitch markers. They go and get the pinstriping tape from AutoZone or O'Reilly's or whatever. I don't want to show any brand favoritism here in this series. We're not sponsored by any auto repair shops. But you go and, and you put tapes all over the fingerboards so that they can put down their fingers in close to the right spot because they don't necessarily have their ears developed yet. So they need some kind of a guide. So they start putting their fingers down and you know it's kind of up to the director how many fingers do you tape all four fingers do you tape one and three do you just tape through you know like what are you going to start off with and, and that's kind of up to the director and everybody has their own way to do things but ultimately most people use some kind of a pitch marker to get everybody started and again if you're able to teach your class without using any kind of pitch markers that's sort of the ideal situation but uh, just for the sake of the director's mental health, usually that doesn't happen. So, you know, whenever you start taking those pitch markers off, that's usually when a student has become comfortable hearing the pitches so you can get rid of those visual markers and start tuning with the ears. And I think that's probably the best time to learn how to start shifting. Now, I have seen pitch markers. I've seen these like decals that you can just sort of affix to the fingerboard that go all the way up the fingerboard. And, and it looks like Rainbow Bright took her magic wand and just kind of cast a spell on the students' instruments. And gosh, they go up into really high positions. Um, how accurate do you think those really are when the students are playing up there, particularly if they don't have the left hand technique or the right hand technique to be able to play in first position, much less in 11th position, which is what those pitch markers seem to go up to. Looking at the scope and sequence of visual pitch markers and shifting, there are three choices that you can make as a director. The first choice that you can make is you can tape all the way up the fingerboard, or at least as high as you're going to teach shifting third position probably, and rely on visual markers. The second thing that you can do is you can wean the students off of their pitch markers and make sure that they're comfortable with that, then teach shifting. And the third option is to wean the students off simultaneously with the scope and sequence of shifting at the same time. And if you know, you would hear my philosophy of going from simple to complex. That's probably not the best solution. It would probably be wiser to pick one or the other. If you take a look at taping up all the way up the fingerboard, well, that's going to be a lot more labor intensive for the director. And also, it's going to delay the student learning to tune with the ear. Now, if you have a choice between tuning with the eyes and tuning with the ears, the ear does a better job of detecting sound than the eyes do. So the eyes are not the best sensory organ for detecting pitch. The ear is the best sensory organ for that. However, the ear has to be trained. So if you're going to tape all the way up there, you're going to delay that ear training and continue the students relying on visual markers, it's going to be that much harder to wean the students off of the, of the pitch markers, and that might become an issue later on when you're really trying to go for quality tuning uh, in those advanced ensembles. So that leaves option two, which is what I would recommend, which is start weaning the students off the tapes, get them to listen, get them to do some of the tuning exercises and, and use their ears and make sure they can match pitch really well and then remove a tape at a time until they're completely off the tapes. And then you can use the same exercises that you use establishing tuning in first position to establish shifting because they're going to have their ears developed. They're going to know what is in tune and they're going to have the culture of tuning established for their ensemble. Just to remind people when I'm talking about culture, don't be confused. I'm not talking about like a bacterial culture. You know, I'm not talking about an ethnic group. I'm talking about sort of the behaviors and skills of the ensemble and how everybody comes together to either play in tune or not play in tune as it, as it relates to that skill. Once the students have their ears developed, 
they should have the technique involved in developing quality intonation, and they have the ear to develop quality intonation. And then playing in the other positions really isn't that different. There's just a couple of extra things that we need to add on, a little bit more complexity, and then they have most of the skills developed to where that's not going to be an issue. But if you disagree, or if you're one of those directors that can start your bases off in fourth position successfully, well, we'd like to learn from you. So maybe you can leave some comments in the comment section below and leave some tips about how you sequence shifting and some strategies for when that should happen and uh, how you're able to get the bases to play in fourth position, the rest of the class in first position. That would be interesting to know. So feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below.